Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the Ten Talents. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they love the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. In last week's parable, the Ten Virgins, is one of four specific parables Jesus told about being ready for his return. He said, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 4. The wise ones had prepared for the emergencies of life. Jesus said that the bridegroom was delayed, and when he finally came, the unwise virgins did not have enough oil to prepare themselves to meet him. The unwise virgins eventually came late to the wedding feast, and some of the saddest words that Jesus ever spoke were heard. He said, your lamps are going out, the door is shut, and I do not know you. There are some things that cannot be obtained at the last minute. And being spiritually prepared for the return of Jesus cannot be given away or shared at the last minute. I can't give anyone the preparation that I have made to meet Jesus when he comes. Each person is responsible for their own spiritual preparation to meet Jesus. Now, either we are spiritually ready for Jesus to come or we are not. And Jesus ended the parable by saying, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13. Now, after his last visit to the temple, Jesus took his disciples to the Mount of Olives where he told them the parable of the ten talents. To properly understand this parable, we need to know what a talent actually is. A talent is a bar of silver or gold, usually weighing between 60 and 75 pounds, or 26 to 35 kilos. It was more common for talent bars to be made out of silver than gold. And a silver talent was equal to 15 to 20 years of work. That's a lot of resources and a lot of time. And so we need to free ourselves from the thought that one talent was not enough to work with. I'm sure no one listening to this message would feel like being given 20 years of salary would not be enough to work with. Now, as an application to our lives, we can think of talents in this parable as God-given abilities, resources, and opportunities. As in the parable, so in real life, God is the owner of all things, and we are his managers. Jesus began the parable by saying, The kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey. He called his servants, and he entrusted them with his property. Notice that the servants were given God's property. Everything I have has been given to me by God. He has given me abilities and resources and opportunities. And more precious than these, he has given himself to his followers. So we need to learn to work with what we have been given. Jesus said to the one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability, and then he went away. Matthew chapter 25, verse 15. Notice that God gave according to each one's ability. And God knows exactly how much he can trust me with at this moment in my life, as well as you. Right now, I have everything that God can trust me with, not a penny more and not a penny less. 
Jesus continued by saying, he who received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also who he who had the five talents or the two talents made two talents more. Matthew chapter 25, verse 16 and 17. The first two men went at once without delaying to work with what they had been given. They traded with what they had to grow the resources that had been entrusted to them. Then Jesus said about the last man, he who received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 18. Now the reaction of the one who received the one talent was very different. He had a personal crisis. He dug a hole in the ground and he hid the master's money. We might say he had a spiritual meltdown. It would be good to ask ourselves what unused, hidden, or buried talent is holding back our spiritual growth. Procrastination is one of the most common differences between success and failure in life. Then Jesus said, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Matthew chapter 25, verse 19. Eventually, the master returned, and he came to check on the progress each of his servants had made. And the master discovered he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents, and here I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 and 21. His master called him a good and a faithful servant. And he put him in charge of more because he had been faithful over a few things. It always amazes me that the master who'd given him five, the one the most, he said, you've been faithful with just a few things. It tells us how generous our God is. Uh, next, the master met with the man whom he had given two talents. And he who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered two talents to me, and here I have made two talents more. Matthew chapter 25, verse 22. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. The master rewarded him with more. And finally, the third servant came, and he reported to his master, saying, Master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. This man had a twisted view of his master. He called him hard-hearted, and accused his master of trying to take advantage of people. So he went on to say, I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. Matthew chapter 25, verse 25. What sad words. Are you struggling to see God as being loving and kind? Or do you see God as someone to fear and obey out of duty? And God wants to free us from having a twisted view of who he is and his attitude towards us. And so the master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reaped where I have not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. The man only gave him back what he had, no gain. Matthew 25, verse 26 and 27. In another shockingly unexpected ending to the parable, the master said, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. Matthew chapter 25, verse 28. Now, what is your reaction to these words of Jesus? Does your reaction reflect a distorted view of Father God and how he treats his servants? 
Uh, Jesus wants us to know that how we use our gifts today determines the gifts that we will receive tomorrow. One time, Pastor Margaret and I visited a marine store in a very small Caribbean island. To my surprise, there was a talent of silver that had been retrieved from a sunken ship just sitting on the counter. I had to try to pick it up. It was so much heavier than I expected. It helped me understand the story Jesus told. One talent of silver was plenty to work with. And every one of us has been given gifts and abilities by God to work with. We have enough to bless others and extend the kingdom of God around the world. I understood why Jesus said, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Matthew 25 and verse 29. Now the key word in the parable of the faithful servant is be awake. And the key word in the parable of the ten virgins is be prepared. The key word in the parable of the ten talents is be fruitful. The message of the faithful servant is Jesus is coming, ready or not. The message in the parable of the ten virgins is too little, too late. The message in the parable of the ten talents is work with what you have. Jesus ended the parable by saying, cast that worthless servant into outer darkness And in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 30. Now, those are not words I ever want anyone to hear. If you're already following Jesus, recognize that God is the owner of everything you have, including your natural gifts and abilities. Use them to the best of your ability to bring glory to God. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, we invite you to follow Jesus right now. Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive you for all of your sins. Accept the payment that Jesus made for you. Ask Holy Spirit to come and fill you with his presence. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me, and I'll share more information with you on how to grow as a new believer in Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.